Mr. Speaker, I move that this bill be now read a second time. The member for Jenison has the call. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Speaker, regrettably, uh, there are some constants in this place. Uh, one of the constants is the widespread misuse of parliamentary allowances by members of the House of Representatives uh, and by senators. Uh, another constant is that uh, when there have been episodes exposed, um, normally in the media, the government's response uh, has tended to be reactionary and tended to be minimalist. Um, now, I will, I will spare uh, honourable members uh, a long list of examples of the sorts of misuse that we've seen in recent years. But uh, this morning, just a, a very, very quick uh, internet search threw up uh, a number which would uh, remind people of the problem. Uh, for example, in 2013, uh, the late member for Canning, um, he got himself into strife when it was uh, discovered that uh, he had claimed uh, travel uh, and accommodation for he and his wife to fly from Perth to Cairns, uh, about a $2,388 uh, claim on the public taxpayer. And about a week after that trip, uh, uh, his register of interest was updated to show that he'd bought an investment property in Cairns. Um, more recently, mid-2015, uh, we had all of the uh, exposés about members of parliament going to various weddings. Uh, we had uh, former Speaker Bromland Bishop, who would claimed to go to uh, Sophie Mirabella's wedding near Albury. Uh, Senator George Brandis, uh, he paid money back after it was exposed he'd attended the wedding of uh, uh, shock jock Michael Smith, um, the, the current member for Cook and the Treasurer, uh, and the current member for New England, um, the Minister for Agriculture, uh, who both paid money back for attending weddings. Um, the member for Warringah, he also went to Sophie Mirabella's uh, wedding on the public tab, uh, and the member for Warringah also went to the former Speaker Peter Slipper's wedding uh, on the public tab. Now, admittedly, some of those have been paid back, although not all, I understand, um, but it's, uh, they were only paid back when the episodes were exposed in the media. The current member of uh, government business, Christopher Pine, uh, exposed in uh, late 2015, he claimed $5,000 to take um, his family to Sydney for a week for official duties, apparently, between Christmas and New Year's Eve. The uh, manager of opposition business, no, one's, uh, no side of politics is clean here, a speaker, um, it was exposed that he charged taxpayers more than $12,000 for a four-day trip to Uluru in 2012 for he and his family, including $8,000 for business class seats for his children. Um, more recently, late, uh, late last year, member for Swan, um, he uh, got himself into strife when it was discovered that he charged taxpayers to fly uh, his wife home after their wedding. Uh, it goes on, Speaker. Um, I think you could probably say the still unresolved question of why the current foreign minister charged something like $30,000 to the taxpayer by um, uh, flying or getting a, a RAF VIP jet to fly her and her partner back from a charity dinner uh, in Perth. Uh, and of course, probably the example of all examples um, uh, was former Speaker Bronwyn Bishop, who famously charged taxpayers $5,000 to hire a helicopter to go less than 100 kilometres from Melbourne down to Geelong. Uh, although perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, former Speaker Bishop has been, um, when I say the most famous example, perhaps there's one more famous example now, the very recent example of former Health Minister uh, Susan Lee, um, who uh, on the taxpayer tab went to the Gold Coast uh, overnight, I think, uh, and while there bought an investment property. I mean, there are just so many examples, Speaker. So no wonder the community, no wonder the community is so critical of members of parliament and of senators. No wonder there is a broad view, and I think a deserved view in the community, that way too many, and in fact one would be too many, but many uh, members and senators having their snouts in the trough of profiting uh, from the taxpayer, pa taxpayer on account of their job. And I make the point again, Speaker, that time and time again it's been shown that governments have been slow to respond, uh, and they've really only responded um, frankly, to shut the public up. 
Um, after the Bronwyn Bishop episode uh, and the so-called Choppergate, uh, the government, to, to its credit, did actually uh, commission an inquiry to senior uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, Mr Conde and Mr Tune. Uh, he came up with 36 recommendations, but here we are a year later, and it's only now that those recommendations are being implemented on account of the scandal surrounding former Health Minister Susan Lee. So, Speaker, we have a problem. There is no doubt we have a problem. Um, and I do not accept that the government has gone nearly far enough uh, with the uh, reforms that are, that are in the process of being implemented. Frankly, and I, shouldn't be, I probably shouldn't be this uh, cynical, but there's reason to be this cynical and sceptical. Until all of those reforms are implemented in full, I will be, I will be suspicious that we'll ever see them all implemented uh, in full. Remember, after former Speaker Bronwyn Bishop's Choppergate affair, there was an inquiry. There were 36 good recommendations made, and a year later, virtually none of those recommendations had been implemented, and they were only implemented on account of this most recent scandal. In other words, the government at the time was happy to, to, look, um, to look strong and decisive, uh, to send the the, uh, the message to the community, but it turned out to be just theatre, that it was going to crack down on the rorting. It had its inquiry, it got its recommendations, then it just shelved them. It was happy, happy for the matter to be behind it and for the community to think the issue was resolved. And it only took the more recent example with the Gold Coast purchase that the government thought, oh, heavens, we're going to have to implement them uh, after all. So I want the government to go further. Um, the fact that the current reforms do not include any audit, for instance, of the use of parliamentary allowances, uh, uh, historic use of allowances over the last uh, several years. That suggests, well, it shows that the government, and it is supported by the opposition, that the government is prepared to let uh, bygones be bygones and any uh, rorting that might have occurred in the past uh, should be left uh, in the past. Well, I don't accept that. And that brings me to the, the substantive uh, substance of this bill, Speaker. This bill would build on the reforms that have been announced in recent weeks and build on them in a substantive way. Because this bill, and I think it's quite a reasonable and achievable bill, and I'll be very disappointed if the government and the opposition don't support this bill, Speaker, because all this bill requires is that there be that audit, back to the 2013 election, in fact that all use of parliamentary allowances by all members and senators back to the 2013 election be audited to find out who else had their snout in the trough. Because it's not good enough that we just focus on a few, on a few unfortunate souls who got busted. We should focus on all the other people that tripped around this country uh, what, for what any reasonable person would say was substantively a, uh, for private uh, uh, purposes and then dressed it up as official travel, signed a form to say it was an official trip and took the coin. Well, I tell you what, Speaker, that's theft in my world and by my standards, and I'm sure the member for Indi who seconded this bill would agree with me, Absolutely. that if someone trips around this country and says it's an official trip and has the taxpayer pay for it, but in reality the substantive business was personal, then that is fraud, that is theft. And that brings me, in fact, to the second and third components of my private members' bill, Speaker. And that is that in future, whenever a member or senator puts in a claim for the payment of allowances for an official trip, that he or she should list on that form, and the form should be changed to allow this, that form should list all substantive activities conducted on, on the trip, including private activities. And that way, in future, uh, the bureaucracy here but also the public who would have access to those forms uh, online would be able to look and make their own judgment. And if a health minister in future spends a night on the Gold Coast and has one meeting with, uh, with someone about a relatively minor matter and also buys a house while they're there, then the public can judge that trip for what it, for what it is. And that's a private trip, a trip for which not one cent of public money uh, should be claimed. And the final component, Speaker, is when there is misuse, it shouldn't be a small fine. It shouldn't be a slap on the wrist. It should be calling the police, because if any person in this country claims money fraudulently from the Commonwealth, that's theft, whether they be a Centrelink recipient, a business or a member of parliament. I call on the government and the opposition to support this private member's bill. Thank you, Speaker.